and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9. I'm Paul Kretschmer, introducing you to Steve Tuzenu, the general manager for our station, with his interview today with the Reverend Dick Gill. Welcome to the WIHS Journal. I'm WIHS General Manager Steve Tuzenu, and with me in the studio is Pastor Dick Dill. He is the Area Director for an organization that goes by the name of Harvest Pack. Pastor Dick, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Steve. I'd like to know how you came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was eight years old, and my stepfather actually led me to the Lord at that age. He was a big guy, and it sounded really good. Jesus sounded really good, and so that combination, I gave my heart to the Lord at eight. You were pastor and you're also the area director for Harvest Pack. How did you get involved with Harvest Pack? I was working with a um, another organization that did a very similar thing. It was Kids Against Hunger, and they did went through some organizational changes that made it difficult for us. And I was looking around for another organization to feed people and came across Harvest Pack and have been working with them for about six years now. Harvest Pack takes care of the food and nutrition needs of people. And what part of the the globe do they handle? They cover pretty much the whole globe. Wherever there's a need, wherever there's people that are willing to package meals, um, they go there. We work with another group. It's called um, the Orphan Grain Train. It's a Lutheran group, and they have a headquarters in Terryville. I live in Plymouth, and they do a lot of shipping for us. You mentioned to me before that this is a Christian organization. How do they handle the spiritual element while feeding people food? How does that work? with this organization? They leave that up to the individual groups that are working with them. They just, their goal is to feed people and to feed as many people as they can. They will work with secular organizations. I've worked with Rotary Clubs, with Lions Clubs. I've worked with churches. I've worked with a lot of schools and uh, we've packaged a million, almost a million 800,000 meals to date. So what do they do, and how do they do it at Harvest Pack? We set up an assembly line. There's a funnel at the at the first end of the table, and there are four ingredients that go into Harvest Pack meals. There's soy and rice, and then there's six dehydrated vegetables and a powder that is 21 vitamins and minerals that goes into a, a vinyl bag. It gets weighed because it has to be shipped, and we have to know the weight, and then it gets sealed, and then it goes in a box. Where would you say the biggest needs are as far as food and nutrition? Right now, we, we were shipping a lot to Haiti, but right now we're shipping a lot to Ukraine. We've shipped over 100,000 meals to Ukraine because the need is, is incredible there. What sort of influence does the political, the local political environment have on what you do? So far, so good. We've been able to get meals into Ukraine. There's a church in Maryland that's a Ukrainian church, and they have a contact with the church in Ukraine, and they're able to get the meals in. And in Haiti, because of the gangs, we've had to be very careful to, um, to ship. We work with a group called the Friar Suppliers out of Long Island. They're a riot. They're good, good folks. But um, they have to be careful because the gangs will intercept their meals. They'll kidnap their people. So we have to be very, very careful when and where they sh- they bring the food up to an um, orphanage just outside of Port-au-Prince. But uh, it's, it's very hard in Haiti right now. I'm looking at your brochure, and I just can't believe how little it costs to feed someone. How do you do that? We, we're all volunteers. All of us, my, other, my the guys that work with me, the other staff have to work with me, all volunteers. We have a guy who's a um, appliance salesman and repairman. He has a truck. Once in a while, we have to rent a U-Haul, but he uses his truck for shipping or, or getting to the places where we're going to pack and um, bringing the food back as well. He's got a, a box truck that we use. And when we have to use a U-Haul, it doesn't cost us all that much. We go around the Northeast. We've been up to Northampton. We've been out to Rye, New York. We've been to Rhode Island. We've been all over Connecticut. We've got two packagings coming up up in the next two weekends. One is in Brookfield, the high school there, and the other one is in Southington. It's three different rotary clubs that are getting together to package meals. And uh, so none of us make any money. We're still able to hold the line at 25 cents a meal, but it's getting tricky. Things are getting more and more expensive. So but we're still doing it for 25 cents a meal. That's amazing. I can't go to a fast food restaurant and buy anything for 25 cents. They don't have anything for sale for 25 cents. That's right. Yeah. And, and yet you can feed somebody for 25 cents a meal. That is truly amazing. And we can ship because of the fryer suppliers 
and because of the orphan grain train, our people who package the meals don't have to pay for shipping to get the meals to where we want them to go. Where do you get the meals to send to people? The uh, organization is out in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I have a, um, an agreement with them to be a distributor for them. So we order from them. We get it shipped to where we are. Our headquarters is in Waterbury. And then they, they take care of getting us the, the supplies. It takes three weeks notice for them to be able to get the stuff to us and get it shipped to us on time for a packaging. But they get it to us. What kind of quality do you give these people for 25 cents a meal? It's life-changing, literally. I don't say that lightly. It's life-changing because the, the, the soy and the dehydrated vegetables are protein. 21 vitamins and minerals um, are all health-producing things. And then the rice, everybody eats rice. And it's it's the, it's the we're very car- conscious about carbohydrates, but in, in third world countries, in two third world countries, that's not such a concern. They need the carbs. So the rice provides that. What kind of response do you get from the people that receive these meals? Oh, they love it. They love it. It tastes a lot like rice pilaf. In, in, the, in America, and we have done some packagings for p- countries or uh, towns and cities in America, it's a side dish. But in each bag, there are six meals. In a third world country, you add, add that to six cups of, of boiling water and it will produce six meals. What kind of a hunger situation do we have going on in America? In America, people are hungry. In third world countries, people are starving. That's that's the main difference. But there are hungry people in America. And for example, I mentioned Northampton. They always work with a food pantry in Northampton for their packagings. What parts of the United States are in short supply of food and are needy? Well, I think it's everywhere. We concentrate on the Northeast because we all have full-time jobs and we, we can't travel much more than the Northeast. But we find hungry people everywhere. How can our listeners help you in what you're doing with Harvest Pack? We're always looking for folks who want to package meals. It, we suggest a thousand dollars as a minimum to make it a worthwhile packaging because it goes pretty quickly. You get the people around the table packaging the meals and it goes very quickly. We can package 10,000 meals in about two hours. We just did it in West Hartford. And uh, so if anybody wants to package, all they have to do is contact me. I'll give you my phone number in a minute and uh, they can call me and we can set it up. I, I remember that I need three weeks notice, be able to order the supplies in. I need a place uh, that will s- where we can set up tables. We usually use four or five lines of two eight foot tables end to end to uh, provide the, the space for this. And then we need volunteers. So where do you typically package these meals? Schools, a lot of schools, a lot of churches, um, community centers. This weekend we'll, we'll be at Brookfield High School. And then the weekend after that we'll be at a middle school in Southington where those rotary clubs will, will come together package. Now they've raised almost $4,000. So they're going to package a lot of meals. So you want people to get involved in a financial aspect as well? If they're going to package, then yes, we need, we need the money up front. We don't really have a budget for a lot of the supplies. It, it comes as we're doing a packaging. But if anybody wants to donate so that we can get better equipment, we have all the equipment, but things wear out. Our sealers burn out and different things wear out, need gas for the truck, things like that. They can donate as well if they want to. Um, and I can give them that information as well. What if somebody just wants to help you pack food? Is that something they can do too? Absolutely. Yeah. Just call and we'll, if we've got a packaging going on in their area, they can come and join us. If they want to set one up, it's very easy to do that. Very easy to get volunteers. I'm amazed at how many high school kids and younger will actually show up and adults. We say that anybody from eight to 80 can come and package meals with us. And we've had people from eight to 80 come and do it. So I'm getting close. I'm, I'm getting up there. So so how can they get in touch with you to get involved with Harvest Pack and help you with your mission? The easiest way is to call my cell phone, which is 860-483-2109. I always have it on me. If I don't call you back right away, if you leave me a message, I will call you back so that I know who you are and uh, glad to. Once again, for people who missed that the first time. 860-483-2109. Thank you, Pastor Dill. We've been speaking with Pastor Dick Dill, who is the area director director for Harvest Pack. Thank you for joining us on the WIHS Journal. I'm Steve Tuzin. For further information about what you've done on today's broadcast, call us at 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. Or you can drop a line to us at office at wihsradio.org. That's office at wihsradio.org. The WIHS Journal is always looking for ideas for broadcasts. If you're aware of an activity or a service in the area that you think would be a fit for our broadcast, feel free to call us at our contact numbers just given. You may also visit our YouTube site for videos from programming here at 104.9. That address is WIHS 1049. 
That's WIHS 104.9. I'm Paul Kretzmer for Steve Jusen and the Reverend Dick Dill, the WIHS Journalist Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.